G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today I'm loading up in the star system start so that we can have a look at a little method that I think works pretty well in order to find ores since the new graphics update. With the new update we can no longer see those dark patches on the ground that we used to be able to see and if you're a good pilot you can probably safely fly around at 50 to 100 meters above the ground and search for those ores but if you don't get lucky and end up on the bright side of the planet doing that can be pretty dangerous even if you are good at flying these around and if you've watched any of my other videos you'd know that I'm not one of those pilots I tend to get a little bit excited fly too fast and at the very least hit a few trees but often end up hitting something harder so instead what I would like to show is a little design of a rover which can use the large grid detector that's on this with only a few blocks having to be ground off this lander. The lander will still be completely functional if you use this design and once we get down to the ground I'll show you how we're going to build that. When you're heading towards the ground it probably pays since we're going to use a rover to head for somewhere relatively flat. It doesn't have to be particularly flat, especially with the new upgraded wheels, but somewhere reasonably level so that you can get around and cover a decent amount of ground in order to find those ores that we're after. Okay, now that we've landed, let's start getting the pieces we need to put this together. First off, we're going to need to grind down one of these LCD panels and we'll also need to eventually grind down our detector that's on here. Let's grab a few hundred steel plates, the large steel tubes, 20 power cells. We'll just grab all of those construction components, the motors, the displays, and that's pretty much it. To be able to add an antenna to this vehicle, we will need to break down a couple of things. And what we're going to break down is some of these computers. We'll take the ones we need but we are going to use the disassembling function of the assembler to break down about 60, I think is enough to get the silicon and the iron we need in order to build four radio communication components. Once that's done, we can then order those up to be assembled, but we'll come back to that shortly. So let's head out here. And let's set up for building our new rover. On our second hotbar, which you get to by pressing Control 2, let's add a light on a block cockpit. We need a battery. We'll need some wheels, an ore detector, an antenna, and we'll also need a rotor and a rotor part. And if we're going to be driving at night, it's probably worth adding a spotlight as well. On our first menu, let's replace a couple of these things because we're going to need a landing gear as well to get this started. So, place a large block in the ground, grab our landing gear, and to convert to the small version of the block, press the number again, and then we'll see our small version. Now, sometimes this can be a bit irritating to get placed on here, but there we go. Drop it down, and it'll lock even though it's not constructed. This will give us a nice strong platform on which we can build up a few levels and then come out five or six this way as well. Now we build the spine of the vessel so we probably want about eight blocks out from each side so that we've got a nice stable base to drive around on and you'll see why this is necessary later on then build out four from each side as well and that should be wide enough. On the end of each of these four spines we'll add a 3x3 three three wheel and I'm using 3x3 three three wheels so that we don't need to grind off any parts of the lander but if you're breaking down the lander I would actually suggest going up to 5x5s. Five They'll give you more clearance from the ground and make it a little bit easier to get around so they do have an advantage here. Let's hop up on top of our vehicle scaffolding, place down a battery at one end and the cockpit at the other. 
We'll weld these two up right now because they're going to be helpful for the next bit we're going to do. So we'll just weld that to functional, remembering to weld it up fully later. And now that we've got power and a means to control it, we can add our rotor. And we're going to want to add a rotor towards the rear. Probably about here is right. So three blocks out from that battery. Place that down. Then we're going to grind off the rotor head. So once we've got the rotor part. There we go. Grind off the rotor part. Weld up our rotor. We're going to need to grab a small steel tube, which is missing. And we can grab that small steel tube from one of these steel catwalk plates. So we'll just grind that down. And there we go. Got a small steel tube, which will need those other small steel tubes for the wheels as well. So we'll grind up, we'll weld up that rotor. And now for the slightly tricky part, we need to add a few armor blocks around this rotor in this sort of pattern. So that it's the center of the five on one side of a die. On top of this, we're going to place a large rotor part. And we'll need to get fairly high for this to work. Switch to large mode with this. Still have to go higher. And once we can place it, we want to drop that directly on our rotor. Like so. It'll rest on those four armor blocks and it'll keep it steady while we hop into the cockpit, go to our rotor and click attach. Before welding up that rotor part, you can actually see the numbers on the top of the rotor. So what we want to find out is which number faces the cockpit. And in this case, it is 90. So what we want to do is jump in here, grab our rotor. We can see that its current angle is 199. So if we move it backwards towards 90 and we set our lower limit to 90, it'll stop when it gets there. And to move it backwards, we want a negative velocity. So we'll write negative one. And we'll see that that degrees is coming down and you'll see that the top of the rotor is turning. The reason I want to do this is to have it perfectly square. You can square it off to whichever degrees you like. It doesn't actually matter. The only reason I suggested doing it this way was to demonstrate a little bit about how the rotor works for those who aren't familiar. On top of this large rotor head, we can place our ore detector. And there we go. That's the basic or detect a rover that we're going to build. If you want to make this a bit more useful, we can even add some cargo to it so that when we get to our ore deposits, we can drill them out and load up the car instead of just using our personal inventory. We'll weld up these wheels and then I'll demonstrate the last couple of functions we need to do on this so that it'll be maximally useful. One thing that I would recommend is getting rid of these light armor blocks here. It tends to upset the rotor a little bit but doesn't actually cause any damage. You'll just occasionally see sparks coming from it and getting rid of these seams from my practice with this to slightly reduce the number of sparks you get. To build this detector, we're going to need to first grab some hydrogen, but we'll just grind down our detector on the bottom of the ship. So with hydrogen in hand, we can grind this detector down and move it onto our rover. You might be wondering why we're going to the effort of building a large grid detector on a small grid rover. The small grid rover is because it's cheaper to build and the large grid detector is because it has three times the range of the small grid detector. So the small grid detector has a range of 50 meters. This has a range of 150 meters. And that is going to be a big advantage when we're driving around trying to find ores. The last thing we need to do is that thing we started organizing for at the start which is to build four of these radio components. And I didn't disassemble quite enough to get enough iron. So we can just disassemble, what have we got? Let's just disassemble a few steel plates. There we go. Disassemble those. And then go back to our assembling. And when we click this, we have enough of all parts. There we go grab our parts from our assembler and on the front or basically anywhere on the rover let's add our antenna the reason we want our antenna i'll demonstrate very shortly but before that 
why don't we add a little spotlight to the front. Throughout this build, you're likely to run out of hydrogen. And fortunately, the lander comes with a decent supply and you can just refill yourself as you need from the med bay inside. So let's grab our spotlight. We'll place it up a bit higher so that it'll have a bit better. So it'll do a little bit more to improve our visible range. And then, apart from adding a cargo container if we like, we're pretty well good to go. Normally I'd weld up these scaffolding blocks, but for now let's just demonstrate with it as is. Let's break it off from there, and then grind down the rest of this setup part, and we're good to go. Fortunately the wheel settings that we've got now work pretty well for this, and keep it quite stable. But to get this to work properly, we're going to need to access our ore detector, increase its range up to 150 meters, and now you see why we built an antenna. Because if we have this to broadcast using antennas, when we hop out of the ship, we'll still be able to see any ore that it's detected. And that iron that it's picked up is just that rock back there. So let's drive around a little bit until we can see a deposit underground. Oh, what's that over there? Uranium, here we go. So that didn't take very long. You can see now that we're able to spot a number of different ores. If we didn't have an antenna, and let me demonstrate what that will look like by turning the antenna off. When we hop out, we should have lost. There we go. When we hop out, we lose those detect those ore markers. So if we have an antenna, we can still have them visible the whole time and we can go, all right, let's go and dig out this magnesium. So I'll run over directly on top of it. Crouch down, drill down with right click until I reach the magnesium and then drill myself a hole, but hole to get back out. And this way I can use this without having to get within the detector range of my personal drill, which is actually quite small. So this is a much easier way of mining. And we've gotten this detector ship without putting our lander at risk of crashing and ruining our day. There we go, down at the magnesium. Stuff bouncing around like crazy above me, but that's okay, I guess. And then we can just drill out a few bits. And this is where you kind of want to have a cargo container on that ship eventually. So that instead of having to carry each load back as your suit is just full, at least you'll have a bit more cargo. So now that we've mostly filled up our inventory, we can either fly back out this hole or, again using our right click drill, just look slightly upwards and just keep walking forward until we hit the surface. That way you'll have a path you can walk down and walk back up out of in case you run out of hydrogen at the bottom. And that's my preferred method of drilling because then we get a shaft that goes really easily down to where we need to get to as well as having a nice, straight, easy path to get back up and back down with without having to expend any hydrogen from our pack. If you haven't added a cargo container to this ship, you do still have a little bit of extra cargo. If we go to our inventory when we're on board, you can see that the cockpit has an inventory storage on it. In case you're wondering, this is in times 10 inventory settings because that's the default. On times 10, you get 10,000 liters, which is quite considerable. And it's about two and a half loads worth of your personal inventory. So if you're on times three, it's still about two and a half. And if you're on times one, the same again, but times one, you'll only get a thousand liters. So it'll make it even more important for you to add a cargo container. With the pieces that we've got left, let's see how much we might need in order to add a medium container to this rover. And we're going to want this somewhat balanced. So for now, let's just pop it directly on top of this antenna, even though that's a really awkward spot. But we can move it later and this is more just to discover whether we've got the parts. Even though we're lacking the motors, we actually still get a functional cargo container. And then we've got even more storage on board. So you can leave your lander functional in terms of being able to fly. 
while constructing something like this. And if you want to relocate, it even works reasonably well in that. Though, first thing we will do is we're going to share inertia tensor and we are going to lock this down. Don't think the lock is absolutely necessary, but the share inertia tensor certainly makes this a little more stable with what I'm going to do next. What I'm going to do next is fly away. So this will be some careful flying required, so hopefully I don't do my usual trick and just blow everything up. We're going to fly over to our rover, latch onto it with a landing gear, and find ourselves a new spot for a base. There we go, we're locked on. It's probably worthwhile being careful not to put the rover in the path of our thrusters, since we may end up burning part of it off. Hopefully this build will be useful to any of the new players out there trying to understand how to find ore in the new update. And for any of you experienced players, if you've got any tips of your own, I'd love to have them in the comments. That's a really great resource if you're watching any of my tutorials. Make sure you read through some of the comments as a lot of the audience that watch these are actually quite experienced themselves and have a lot of very useful tips. And there we go. I've clearly done a little bit of damage to the rover. So I probably shouldn't have picked it up the way that I did. And as always, there is plenty more to come. More survival, more tutorials, more me accidentally destroying my builds. So I'll see you then.